the consumer price index rose 3.7 percent. Almost all of it was to either related to oil prices or gas prices. What's going to happen over the next couple of months? Right now, the OPEC plus nations have continued their production cuts through the end of the year. So we're going to see a couple of very interesting things in the upcoming months. So we're going to see one month in October where we're going to have a big shortfall in, in the available barrels of oil um, in the market uh, over a week or two stretch. But at the same time, in California, we're moving to the winter blend. So that's a less expensive gas. So that will offset some of the pricing pressure for Californians in particular. When we look at the overall inflation picture, it's generally good news from a consumer perspective because everywhere else we saw prices either stabilize or continue to decline. And, and so one of the big things that the Federal Reserve looks at is the core inflation number, uh, which removes the more volatile food and gas elements. And, and there, that dropped from 4.7 to 4.3%. So that should give us you know, some optimism that the Fed may not raise rates when they meet next week. The really good news for consumers, even though they always get a little bit um, you know, flustered around gas prices, is grocery prices. Grocery prices are on, on the decline. The, the food index is at its lowest level in two years. So overall, it was a good inflation report if you take out oil and gas prices. And um, I think there's some, uh, you know, economists and the Fed are breathing a little bit easier as, as they pull into the fourth quarter of the year. It's both good and bad news for homeowners. You know, for those who own a home and have a low interest loan, it's great news because, you know, they, they're building equity in their property. For people who are looking for homes, it's, it's a very daunting number. You know, psychologically hitting a million dollars for the median home price is a major issue. And this is what the uh, Greater San Diego Association of Realtors just reported this week. You're looking at the price, the average price per square foot at $710. And if you go back just before the pandemic, those prices were averaging between $380 and $400 per square foot. And, and to give you an example, let's say if you're, if you're looking at that million dollar home, if you currently have a three and a half percent interest rate and you're looking to buy in, into it at 7%, the differential is $1,500 a month in interest costs. That's how much more that you'll pay uh, uh, if you're buying a home right now. But regardless, the uh, number of days homes are staying on the market is actually fairly low. We're talking that for the homes that are on the market today, they're being sold within 30 days, which is very, very fast when you compare it to other uh, parts of the country.